everyone, welcome to my channel. First of all, uh, I didn't realize that my video camera wouldn't really pick up audio that well, so um, when you see me talking to myself in the video, that's because I had no idea that it wasn't really getting picked up very well. Um, this first part of the video, there's nothing special going on here. Um, I just wanted to chat a little bit about um, our operation, kind of give you some background on what we do and um, how we do it, why we do it. Um, so I am a brand new farmer. I've never really done anything like this before. Um, I was always an outdoors type of person growing up. Um, went to school, uh, got an advanced degree in mathematics, and now I um, teach math and I do math research for a living. But, uh, you know, my one of my callings is to be out working on projects like this, gardening, uh, raising animals, things like that. So we do sheep and uh, goats. Sheep and goats are a very low margin enterprise. In fact, there was some research done by Cornell that showed that the majority of uh, sheep and goat farmers actually lose money. Um, and so, you know, because sheep and goats are such a low margin opportunity, I need to supplement that with other operations. And so basically what we do is we take all the residues, the goat manure, uh, spent hay and things like that, that the sheep and goats don't eat and compost it. And then we feed it to worms. And that it's one of our bigger products. In fact, that's what we think is gonna be the real money maker on the farm is worms and worm compost. If you buy worms, they're about $20 per pound, and worm compost can be as much as $5 per pound. That's what, that's what we've sold it for. And we've, we've been able to sell every bit that we've had. Um, so basically that's the idea behind our farm is to take multiple enterprises and use the waste streams of one to feed in to another to create a value added stream um, from, you know, from some other operations. So, um, what you're seeing here is a trommel or a screen that we're going to use to screen our compost. We currently have two trommels. Uh, one is a quarter inch screen, similar to what you're seeing here, and the other is an eighth inch screen. But those are trommels that we um, have to turn by hand. So this new trommel that we're putting together is going to have an electric motor on it. So what you're seeing, I have a partner on this operation, and what you're seeing is what he's done is taken some bike wheels, bike rims, uh, took the spokes off, and then basically put some um, quarter inch wire mesh in those uh, bike rims, and that's going to be the frame of the trommel. Um, we have these casters that you're seeing here, the uh, plastic wheels that are nested inside the bike rims. And then I built this frame to go around the trommel, the screen. And right now I'm putting in an axle that's going to attach to the electric motor. So you see that third bike rim right there. That bike rim is going to be attached with a belt to an electric motor. And I'm putting this um, axle through the middle because it's very, very difficult to get the spokes onto that bike rim correctly. So what I want to do is have that spindle that you're seeing in the middle there right dead center inside the bike rim so that when I start putting the spokes back on it'll be nice and centered and it'll get it'll be easy to put the spokes in the right place and at the right angles. So here um, I've drilled the other side and now I'm going to drill this side um, with a hole that's at the exact center. The strings and things that I was using at the beginning of the video were I was using those to get the exact center as best I could. Very painstaking slow process. Once I got the other side drilled out though Drilling this side turned out to be much, much easier to get it nice and centered. Um, 
and so that axle is going to go right through these holes. The axle is made of surveyor stakes uh, that I bought from Home Depot. It's just metal. Um, it's not any high quality metal, but it, you know, metal overall is kind of expensive to purchase. So I found these surveyor stakes at Home Depot. They're pretty cheap and they've, they've been doing the job just fine for us. And so um, I took those metal stakes and I drilled a hole down into them. And then I tapped that hole with a um, tap to, to thread it. And so now I've got these two metal stakes with threads and I can feed an all thread bolt through the, the spindle. Which I'll, I'll explain this a little bit more later in the video, but I've, I've got these all thread bolts that I, you know, combine two of those surveyor stakes with. And then the spindle to the bike rim is in the middle. So that's going to feed through the middle of the trommel. The bit that I had wasn't deep enough to get all the way through, so I had to drill out a little bit at a time and then chisel the rest out. Okay, so here's the axle. didn't fit perfectly at first, so I had to kind of clean out the hole a little bit. Also, the angle wasn't quite right, which you'll see from a different view later. Okay, so there's the whole axle all put together. So that spindle right there is the spindle that the bike rim was made of before I took it apart. To put this on I had to take the spindle off so you can see um, how this is put together is I've, I've got those metal surveyor stakes I tapped I, I drilled some holes and I tapped them so that they would be threaded and then I've got that all thread bolt that's holding the spindle for the bike wheel. So you can see here from the other side, the angle is not perfect. So I had to kind of clean out the holes, uh, give myself a little bit more space to work with. And then that's going to allow me to attach the axle. So chiseling out some more here, scraping out some more from that hole on the other side. So I've got a lot more play, a lot more maneuverability. And it's all attached. Just need to tighten it up. Terrible camera angle, I know. And that is an official success. So you can see that rotates nicely. The hole, now notice it's not perfectly straight, so that I, I was able to fix that with a simple nudge to kind of push it so that it straightened out. The bolt in the middle just bent slightly to allow me to straighten it out so it's not wobbling like you're seeing here. But overall, a success.